Okay. Well, um, so welcome everybody. Um, my name is Parley Burnett and I'm joined here with Chris Schaefer and also Edwin. Yeah. Um, Edwin was uh, going to start us off today, but he is having audio issue, issues. Uh, so we'll hope to hear from him sometime throughout this call. Perhaps at the end, we can have that resolved. We are hoping today for about a, uh, we'll be demonstrating Guardian for about 30 to 40 minutes today. And we've reserved the last portion of the call for some Q and A. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is this is quite an honor for us to, to be joined with this BMBC group. Uh, first time here with you all today. And when we were planning this, Edwin was pretty clear that it, given our our current state of affairs, at where everyone's really mostly remote anyway, he wanted this to be opened up to some outside guests as well. So. If you're part of the BMBC group, um, welcome. If you're from outside somewhere, welcome. Um, glad to have everybody today. Um, we've been planning this for a little bit. We've been really excited to, to share this, especially to have our guest, Chris Schaefer with us, who joins us from HDR. Um, we, we'll do some introductions in a moment, but just a little bit of housekeeping. If you have questions throughout this, we really encourage you to drop those into the chat. We have a couple panelists um, on the call today that's, that are gonna be keeping an eye on those questions. And we'll try to answer them as we go, if, if it's um, the right timing. Otherwise, we'll hold that off to the, towards the end. We are recording this, so we plan to send out that recording afterwards in case you want to recap and just uh, review some of this stuff. Uh, so look forward to that. And also, as we had promised, uh, all attendees on this call today will be entered to win a free license to the preview image generator, otherwise known as PIG. Okay, that's a pretty popular tool. We're not gonna be talking about that one today, but if you have um, ever had an issue with the way Revit creates those thumbnails in your file explorer, they're garbled up with reference planes and all kinds of uh, extraneous things. PIG is the solution for you as it can batch through all of your files. So we'll, we'll conduct that drawing after the call and we'll announce the winner on LinkedIn and directly, of course. Okay. All right, so. Chris, what do you think? Did I miss anything? Sounds good, I think we're ready to go. Okay, all right. So we're just gonna start out today with a couple slides. We're really not gonna um, be uh, at the beginning doing much for, for a slideshow. We just want to give you a pretty good overview of Guardian and, and, and who we are, okay? So I'm joined, uh, I'm Parley, CEO of Guardian. And I, I bring some background from content management, been using Revit for quite a while. And of course, Chris here as uh, really a, a, a veteran in our industry leading all kinds of content management efforts um, at a wide variety of firms. So he'll be talking uh, a fair bit about his experience in that regard, but we want to highlight probably more than anything else, what makes us different. Um, we are focused on providing immediate value. So from day one, when you start with Guardian, we're really focused on giving you that immediate value where you don't have to rely on your users being trained or getting their buy-in to the product. We're really big on that. We are cloud enabled and we offer a prevention approach. That's a big one right there. Um, too often, we have tools that require us to go back retroactively and fix issues. And Guardian is not that kind of thing. Uh, we really are wanting to be at the beginning where the problem occurs, guiding users, maybe it's cleaning up something, because we believe the longer time goes 
with those problems being unresolved, things spiral out of control. And we've all seen that in our project. Okay, um, so we're just gonna take a quick look at Guardian in general with a few slides. I, I, we're doing that mostly because there are some on the call who are new to Guardian. Um, we also recognize that there are some who are already customers of Guardian and people that are kind of looking at it, who've looked at it before. So we're gonna try to, to satisfy everybody here with something new for everybody, okay? So Guardian is, is really your digital twin, okay? If you've ever wished that you had been present when somebody had exploded a CAD file or moved a linked file, um, then this is really kind of where we want to be. We want to be you in a digital format on everybody's computer. We offer proactive protections, preventing those mistakes before they happen. And we want to make your standards um, kind of a, thought, a process that you don't have to think about very much, okay? So to illustrate that in just a few ways, we one of the main features we have is protected pins. This is one example of our protections and it allows you as an administrator to select elements in your model and pin them. Okay, that's nothing new. We can do that with Revit. But with Guardian, you can add a layer of protection to that pin that may um, prevent that from being unpinned or at least notify the user giving them caution when they try to unpin that. All of this is tied together with the notification system and connected projects, okay? So we'll, we'll share a little bit more about that later today. Another form of proactive um, ma um, management here with Guardian is this idea that we can train users in the moment. We no longer, for some of these have to rely on users remembering every little thing that they learn in a training session or a lunch and learn. Maybe you have documents that are sitting in people's desk drawers that aren't really looked at often. Those are costly efforts and too often they go forgotten. So what we're doing here with Guardian is presenting some messages um, when users do certain things like explode CAD, model in place, hide elements in view. Um, we have over 80 different commands that we can kind of customize the experience for. And even if you don't want the dialogues to appear, we offer a monitor mode so that you can at least be aware through our dashboards when those things are happening, who does it, and fancy things like that, okay? The whole idea of that is to give you those clues where you see the issues. Now we can maybe dial up and turn on a dialogue for a few weeks and watch those issues just dry up without us being heavily involved. Chris will be talking um, about how this has gone at HDR in just a few minutes. Okay, and then this is really a, a, a different personality of Guardian. We kind of have two major personalities. And this is the standards aspect of Guardian where we are able to connect our project files together using a really easy registration system. So all of your register projects appear in one place and you can connect those projects together using a shared set of rules. And we call that a mapping configuration. Okay, kind of a long term for it, but basically a mapping configuration contains rules for your decisions. And we really feel like this is just such a cool part of Guardian because the rules are captured, not when you just sit down and decide to create a bunch of rules. Okay, that's against our, our ways, right? We want those rules to be captured in the moment that you make them. So what we're looking at here is a dialogue that appears when you load as an admin something into a project and you're given that chance to clean something up and Guardian can create the rules in the process, which just gets smarter over time. 
Okay, um, moving right along here, we've got a recent feature. This has been a really popular one. Probably our most popular LinkedIn post was about this. And the funny thing about that is we shared this image and there's nothing really exciting about the image itself, right? It's not fancy looking. But if you've ever managed um, a Revit project or a, a, a firm, uh, you know, from a firm-wide approach, you are well familiar with this problem where Revit duplicates the families, creating a nearly impossible problem to, to fix if you happen to have the time to do that. Most of us don't even have that time to do that, much less on every project. And what Guardian will do now is basically prevent this from happening where there's duplicates found when they're coming into a project it will merge those families directly into what's already there. Okay. And lastly, we have some platform features to be aware of. These are not going to be a focus for us today, uh, but they're very popular, um, kind of behind the scenes things. Guardian Sync is, a, is an incredible tool and we're really do doing a lot of work in this area. Uh, what it allows you to do is upload your properties. By properties, I mean your uh, line patterns, fill patterns. We have many more coming soon. It allows you to upload these standard properties from your templates, from your families into a non-version dependent format. And that is enabling lots of exciting things. It's, they are incredibly lightweight. They are, of course, version independent. And as the name implies, can be synchronized across your project system, okay? So kind of uh, think in the future a little bit about where that might go. We are going to soon release things like dimension styles, text types, and ultimately get to things like view templates and things like that. And being able to synchronize those across your projects, regardless of their version, I think is going to be very compelling. And then on the right, we uh, often say this, but with all of the automations that Guardian offers, it's really important that we're transparent to you about everything that we're doing. So we have some reporting features. This is a weekly report that gets sent to you Every Monday morning, it shows you what it was doing for the past week, where families were being loaded from and whatnot. And then all of that is consumable through uh, Power BI or any other kind of um, tool like that where you can connect it to databases. Okay, so I'm going to close out of this PowerPoint and jump right into Revit and show you just one example of how the standards part comes into play uh, on, a, on an automated basis, okay? And I, I hope that some of you will have some questions as we do this. Uh, before I do that, Chris, anything to add there? Yeah, one thing I'd like to add is, is regarding the, uh, the weekly reports. We had an interesting, uh, interesting kind of case study here at HGR, where we had, when we just implemented Guardian on a, a large project, and what we found was in the first week, we saw that there were 12 individuals who were looking to explode a CAD file. And we all know you shouldn't be exploding CAD file. One of the data feedbacks from that weekly report was that 11 people escaped the command because Guardian warned them not to do, do that. And we also knew who that, you know, the the one person who was exploding CAD files. So we were able to go in and troubleshoot that. The next week we saw that like three people attempted to explode a CAD file and because of Guardian, all three decided not to. And in the third week we saw that zero people had tried to explode a CAD file and that continued through the duration of the project. So what we saw was in a matter of three weeks, Guardian was able to change user behaviors um, and what any other means wasn't able to achieve in the last 12 years of Revit. So that is one example how these user interactions really help um, change user behavior in ways that we haven't been able to do 
um, in, in the past. Yeah, and, and I think prior to that, Chris, you had had uh, years of efforts to try to instruct people, uh, training sessions where you reminded them, and it just never happened. That's right? exactly right. That's exactly right. Yep. So um, we really feel like getting in front like that is a better culture. Um, you know, sometimes it's just a better feeling to kind of be reminded at the time you're about to do something than later, uh, right? Later when you're reprimanded or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't feel great. So we just, we like the culture that this brings into a firm. So on the standard side, what I'm going to do is um, just quickly check something out here. Yeah, okay, we're ready. This project has a mapping configuration assigned to it. So when I log out and become a regular user, it's going to be monitoring for stuff coming into the project. And as we bring in a drafting view, we could suppose this is a drafting view from an old, old project where all the text types were named differently, the line styles, old patterns, okay? As we bring this in, it would normally bring in about 60 different properties with it. And on average, that's kind of low. You know, these things can really bring in hundreds of properties when they come from old projects. But now with Guardian, it's going to kick in after recognizing those new properties and fix it. It's going through all of the new detail items, swapping out the line patterns, the fill patterns, um, even on the system family level, it's swapping out things like arrowhead types, text types, and even the browser organization. So it's really pretty neat once you start seeing this take place across your projects. And the time that you're saving, right, is just incredible. To noodle around in all of those families fixing those styles would just take a long time. And just to show you what the um, impact of that is right there. You can kind of see for yourself how much has changed. And one of the things I'll be talking about when it comes to how we implemented Guardian at HDR is, is when we started to sit down and, and take a look at our Revit infrastructure. And really what that means is, is all of our, really our project delivery standards and meeting with you know, our technical leadership, our quality leadership, and saying, what do you want that product to be at the end? And then I worked backwards from there to make sure that the entire Revit structure, Revit infrastructure was, was built to produce exactly what their expectations were. And the use of Guardian was absolutely instrumental in that process. Um, otherwise, um, it, you're, you're always swimming uphill um, or <laughs> hiking uphill. Um, when it comes to maintaining this level of, of standards and perfection throughout your infrastructure. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned leadership there, Chris, because I think if you were to ask leadership at your firm or a, a number of firms and ask if they really feel like the dream of Revit has come true for them, you know, I think a lot would probably say, eh, you know, it felt like in CAD things went up pretty pretty well and our drawings are not looking great right and a lot of it comes down to this nitty-gritty stuff that just happens on a daily basis <clears throat> like your your uh, response there Sean <laughs> um, all right Chris I, I think that's a good lead-in a uh, good overview of what Guardian can do um, want to take it away from there yep. I'll Me. present my screen yeah. Okay. Stop share. I'm also going to stop my video so that you can. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Parley, for that introduction. Um, as Parley mentioned before, I'm Chris Schaefer with HDR. I'm the digital design leader for BIM content. Really, what that means is I'm responsible for our entire Revit infrastructure here at HDR. So uh, I've actually been working closely with Guardian and Parley for. Wow, almost three years now, I, I believe. And what has been great about sort of using Guardian to, and as you can see here, I say perfecting HDR's revenue structure, 
is is seeing that really happen. Um, before I came to HDR, I worked for another large firm, and we worked so hard to make sure every last nook and cranny of of our our templates and our Revit content, our families, were perfect. And it didn't matter how much time and effort we put into it, we felt like we never got things to be perfect. So. How did we do that here in HDR? So one of the things that we did was we started with here at HDR, we, we have, um, we don't call them templates, we call them starter projects. Um, and what we did was we went through every last nook and cranny of those starter projects. And we spent a lot of time determining our baseline Revit properties, which are the foundation to our modeling documentation and graphic standards. Now, at the end of the day, these are really the baseline Revit properties um, that is that is ensures that deliverable meets our technical and quality expectations. And as many of you are aware that all these properties that we see here on the left, those go into making sure that output is, is exactly how we, we need it to be. For too long, we haven't been able to control this in a given project. So, so what we've done is not only did we set up all of our starter projects to be uh, sort of perfected on, on these, these standards and properties to ensure that output is there, but we also took it one step further where what we did was we took all of our Revit families that we have and all of our drafting views or what we call our starter details, and we dumped them into a, a copy of our starter project. Now, as we did that, Guardian went through and cleaned up every last family. And what that ensured was every family that we put in our content management solution and someone goes and downloads it into their project, it perfectly aligns with those standards. And so one of the things is, as you can see here, we did about 15,000 families and 600 drafting views in, during this process. This was done in a matter of days. And, and one of the things I, I really kind of pride myself on um, as the person responsible for maintaining this, when we deliver our, our starter projects and our content to a project, we can say at least at day one, that project starts off perfect. Every last nook and cranny, every last property, every last standard is perfect per HDR standards. But we didn't stop there with that. Um, so one of the things that we've done is, is, is we made sure that everyone was aware of our project properties themselves. So we actually put all these properties in our starter project. So everyone is aware. So um, as we've seen in the previous slides, those properties include line styles, textiles, dimension styles, um, field regions, field patterns, and object styles. And one of the things we hear so often is Revit cannot produce a good looking set of drawings. We all know that isn't true, right? The reason why we, we, we struggle to do that is because we can't control the properties that control the graphical output. And so Guardian allows us to take control of Revit <laughs> rather than Revit controlling us and thus take control of our project delivery, or excuse me, our project deliverables. What, how we go about using Guardian um, on a day-to-day -day basis from a project perspective is part of our overall model health strategy. And so as you can see here, we see that there's, there's three aspects to model health. There's protect, this is a proactive approach to model health. The next is monitor, um, knowing the current state of each model. And the last, last part of this is maintain. It's so it, that is reactively improving the model health on a routine basis. The, the first part of that is to protect. We, we use Guardian to do this. So the, the main thing here is user interactions. So we have found that user interactions, just like we said, I had mentioned earlier about the explode CAD files, this really prevents mistakes before they happen, right? We provide a warning to users saying, hey, do you really want to do this? Uh, the next here is the project properties. As, as Parley had demonstrated, that when you bring content in from uh, another source, Guardian will process that and update it per your company standards. And the last is the protected pins. So what's great about this tool is if you have a grid line, a scope box, a level, you pin it and someone will 
if they go to unpin it, we'll get a warning from Guardian saying, are you sure you want to do this? The next is monitor. So HDR has a, has a tool. And if you were at the, the last, if you're at the last AU, um, our, our former colleague Holger de Groot um, out of our Australia office, who was one of the people who developed this, presented this at AU. Um, and this is a tool that gives us a current state of our models. So it's a dashboard that tells us really how, you know, how well are our models performing. And the last part of it, as I mentioned before, is maintain. So what we've done is created a routine model maintenance procedure in which Guardian is, a, is an aspect to that. Um, in addition to understanding errors and warnings, and we also have something called what we call QA schedules. Um, almost like the BIM view that provides you a real time, the, the QA schedules is another way of looking at the project data, or excuse me, the model data um, within, a given, within a given project. So protected, excuse me, um, user interactions. So as Parley mentioned before, this Guardian provides over 80 commands, which costs users. One of the things that we strive for here at HDR is this is, a, is, this is really about communicating, right? Um, as Parley alluded to is Guardian is sort of a digital version of the BIM manager, right? We cannot be next to every single user as they perform every command. Guardian gives us an opportunity to kind of be there, um, the digital version of us kind of to be there. And at the same time, it, it provides uh, an opportunity to teach and to learn. Um, and so how that kind of works is, is Guardian provides, and I could, probably should have critiqued this particular slide, um, because this is how we present it here at HDR and not necessarily um, exactly how it is within Guardian is there's actually three levels of protection within Guardian. There's the monitor function, which all that does is it does not provide any warnings, but Guardian registers that transaction. And so at a later point, you can go in and understand who did what, when and where with, with a user interaction that's set to monitor. The, the other one here is guide. So, it cautions users of the potential risk of using a particular command. Now, it allows the user to execute that command with the input of a comment. So one of the things that we try to do is, because this can be customized, not only at the, at the company level, it can also be customized at the project level. So we let the project BIM managers to, uh, to have some fun with this. Um, you know, one, one guy calls himself um, the BIM Hulk, and he kind of is like, he's like, don't make the BIM Hulk mad. Um, and, and so don't do this, right? And so, you know, people have fun with it and, and whatnot. And a lot of times you, when you see the comments come back, a lot of people are having fun on the way back as well. So one of the things we see this is, this is really just like your swervy road ahead sign, right? When you're driving down the road and you see, oh, curves ahead, you don't necessarily like, why, why do you tell me that there's curves at everyone understands this is a, th this is a gentle warning saying, Hey, you, you may want to take caution before moving. The second level of protection here is prevent. This will actually prevent users from executing a command. And in order to get past this particular command or this, excuse me, this particular dialogue, the user must enter a project specific password. What's great about Guardian is again, this could be customized at the project level. Here at HDR, the, the, the Guardian password is the worst kept secret ever. We intentionally want it to be that way. It's not that we want to tell people, no, you can't do it. It's, it's saying, hey, you know, why don't you take a time and stop and think about this before moving on? So we use this quite a bit is rather than saying stop, it's like, whoa, right? Won't you just slow down a little bit? Let's think what we're doing. And if you really need to do it, no, go ahead. Chris, just one, one quick comment on that, um, <clears throat> on the password. It, I, I'm glad to see that, that you see it that way as well. We've got uh, another customer who, who actually, with the password, um, write, they write the password in the comment to the user itself. Um, and the password is literally, I understand the risks, 
right? And so um, <laughs> they did that because they found that um, when, when users have to type that in, they basically take ownership for kind of the risk at play. And they've had a lot of success with that. So it's a really customizable system, albeit simple at the same time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I see there's a question here by by Sean. Does it warn monitor who does a drag move shift of elements? I'll let you take that one, Parley. Um, yeah, so that's, that's an interesting one. I think um, we want to be careful there about not being too in the way, right? Um, sometimes those requirements are, uh, they have kind of a time frame to them. And so our approach to this is really through that pinning feature where an admin, that could be a project admin or even a company admin can go into a project file and select those really critical things like the levels and grids, uh, views on sheets, right? Um, not sure exactly what you had in mind, Sean, but uh, if you select some of that stuff and pin it, Guardian will allow you to add that protection to it. Basically, some people leave the drag function. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and this is really the intention of that pinning feature because uh, that, that can be very damaging. Yeah, I, I actually have an interesting story regarding that is is we, we had a, a, a very fast moving developer project um, many years ago. And, and so we all pulled an all nighter and for a Friday deadline. And at noon on Friday, we're like, we're done. And so we're, we're like, let's just do one last process print just to double check here. And we're like, we're gonna have, downstairs was a bar. So we're like, we're gonna have beers on a Friday afternoon. It's a great day. And then we started printing and we looked at a couple sheets and we started to notice someone had accidentally dragged a grid line a couple feet. And as you're aware, it, within Revit, what are things, whether things are actually attached to a grid line or not, um, things within Revit just start associating, right? And so needs to say, um, at, at noon on Saturday, we were finally able to have that beer. And we, we end up um, you know, actually going two days straight without sleeping, working through the night to fix that. And so how I would have loved to have Guardian back at that day and knowing that those grid lines would not be able to be moved at all. Those kinds of things really, uh, when you think about the ROI on this, it, just one of those happening a year could almost pay for a product like this, right? So. Yeah. Uh, what, one thing, uh, I see a question here. How do you deal with CAD link with multiple line types, hatched and materials? Does Guardian auto purge them? I, I want to say that Guardian auto purges it, but it does purge it. And, and what it does is, is you get a, uh, actually, let's, I'm going to answer that um, with the next slide here. Um, and so the, the, the second part of our, I guess, a Guardian aspect of our model health here is the project properties. Now, as mentioned before, Guardian will process project properties as they come in and it gives you an opportunity to clean them up. What I have found here at HDR, not all of our users are comfortable going through, which are pretty basic Revit related interface, um, but a lot of people are not comfortable doing that. Um, and so what you can do is you can set up Guardian where not all of your users will be prompted when, when Guardian um, starts processing content as it comes in. Basically what it will do, it'll, it'll process things um, that, is, that is known per the mapping configuration. And the rest, it'll allow you to go back retroactively and go clean them up. And so this process, whether it's on the proactive side or the reactive side, can be done if someone, uh, you know, say explodes a CAD file. And what that'll do, it will allow you to change all those line styles or, or hatches that come in through, through a CAD file to something that's within your project. So first and foremost, you can lock that down where no one can explode a CAD file or insert a CAD file into a project through the user interactions or 
if you do allow it and someone decides to explode it, um, then they can use Guardian to, to clean all that up and map those to um, map those to the properties that are in your project. Now, one of the great things about Guardian and what I have seen in the past is, and this is something that we did here at HDR, where um, we had a group that had a lot of CAD files that they wanted to make into Revit. And what we found was all those CAD files were made over different years and kind of different CAD standards. So a lot of their, um, their layers had different names and so on and so forth. So as we started inputting all this, uh, all these CAD files into Revit, we started using Guardian to say, all right, this, this layer, this layer name becomes this line style within Revit. And through the mapping configurations, Guardian starts memorizing this and memorizing it. So what we're able to do is, is create a database of all the old HDR CAD standards and layer naming convention and create a mapping sequence that says, all right, those are gonna be these Revit properties. So in the future, when, when people have exploded CAD files that have been you know, part of HDR's you know, legacy content, Guardian has known exactly what to do it. So in many ways, Guardian was auto purging those properties. Now, what, to kind of continue on that, what we did was because a lot of our projects still use AutoCAD, what we were able to do is export all those, um, all those as drafting views, export them back out to CAD files. And now we perfected our CAD files as well, because as, you, as you're aware, within, within Revit, you can set up that, that mapping on the export to say, you know, these line styles become these layers and so on and so forth. So we were able, with the use of Guardian and Revit, make a AutoCAD library better than it ever had in the existence of, of, of our AutoCAD library. So that is, that is really the extent of um, how we use Guardian here at, at HDR. Um, I can't tell you how valuable of a tool it has been. Um, really, one of the things that we see here is, on a given project is, as you're aware, on a given project, especially with the use of, of Revit, it's always one step forward and two steps back, right? With Guardian, you're always moving forward. You find that your users are making much fewer mistakes because Guardian is preventing them from making those mistakes before they happen. Second of all is your project properties. Your project properties are exactly what you anticipate them to be. And so the output of your of your project deliverables, your drawings are what you anticipated them to be from the beginning. So I, it's always moving us in the right direction and really changing the way we're not fighting Revit, but we are, we are, I guess, fighting the design, you know, figuring out design, focused on things that, you know, really make HDR, HDR and not, you know, dealing with Revit. All right, I see a question from Dave, excuse me, from Sean. Does Guardian help to apply automatic pins to certain elements so they don't get moved, i.e. I. floors that are created in new project plans? I'll, I'll let Harley take that one. I mute, I mute myself there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so good question. We, we talk about this often. In fact, this was what Chris and I were talking about this morning. <laughs> um, and, and I, I should back up a little bit. Um, Chris really is, has been a, an excellent partner, um, partner customer of ours for a couple of years now. And a lot of the features that you're, you're seeing today are, are really um, due to Chris's um, thoughts about all of this and experience. So um, yeah, we were actually talking about the pinning and you know, how, how can we get that protection a bit more dynamic, dynamically applied? Um, right now, it's, it's manual. You've got to uh, go in there and kind of pick and choose the things that you want to protect. And that, that seems to be kind of the safe, safe area for us right now while we're learning about what kinds of rules could be applied and then when those rules would be applied. We really don't want to have a situation where somebody... Um, 
creates a floor and they're still in kind of um, architecture mode, right? They're just kind of designing that floor. Maybe they hit that finished floor uh, checkbox in the ribbon, the floor is there and we would not want to apply instantly a protection on that floor because they may want to tweak their, their design, right? So we, we don't want to be that dynamic with it, but we do see um, uh, an opportunity to maybe create some rules that would allow an admin to, in one step, sort of apply rules to any floor that has not yet been protected, as an example. So I hope that answers it. <laughs> Yeah, um, feel the pain there, Sean. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that's really a great thing about having Chris on here. He's got those stories. He's been in the battle with, with all of these commands. One of the things that was recently added was that monitoring aspect. All of these 80 commands can be monitored. So back to that immediate value, we can get Guardian deployed right away and set everything to monitor. And you can just set that listening for a few weeks and you can see just how often people are exploding CAD, hiding elements in view. And you'll find that um, some of those might, um, where you initially see it, uh, maybe a quote unquote issue could be just a couple individuals offsetting those numbers, right? And so you may not need to turn on a dialogue that everybody sees you can now just kind of talk to those three or four people that may not have known that hide element in view was a thing. We've actually had that um, where users did not know that tool existed or sorry, the temporary hide tool existed. So away they went, they're just hiding things in views. Um, and there's obviously a better way to do that. So it's not always about getting the dialogue in front of people. We, just want to give you the information so you can act very quickly. And one of the things that I've seen as well, and one of the things that is great about Guardian is, is when someone executes one of these user interactions, and this is a setting that you can set up, is, is there will be an email notification sent to the project administrator. And so what we found is a lot of times we find that people will execute a command and they didn't they were just trying to figure something out and they didn't know they were more or less making a mistake, but because the project administrator was notified of that, they were able to get to that user really before they could really do any damage, right? Um, before they could sync and, and, or get to the point where they can't undo. So that has been really instrumental and just kind of knowing that, um, that there's an opportunity for people to maybe take some chances um, if Guardian allows them to do it, but knowing that there's someone there kind of, you know, as a backup and, and to help out um, at a moment's notice. So there's, a, there's another question here. Um, how, how does Guardian deal with the various versions of Revit? Does each version need to be done uniquely or is it backward compatible? especially the settings. So I'll let you take that one again, Parley. Yeah, we've really, we've really designed this whole system to be very simple. A lot of the traditional concerns we have in add-ins across versions and things like that really aren't a thing with Guardian. Um, we support all the versions back to um, even 2017 currently. And you don't really need to, set up the, the settings uniquely on a per, per version basis. Um, you basically do it in one place and then no matter the version of Revit people are using, the settings apply in the same way. We handle the complexity behind the scenes if there's a guardian version that may not apply in the same way to let's say 2018 as it applies to 2022. We kind of handle that all ourselves. That's really the power of having this cloud connected environment, right? Just in one place, it's very easy to deploy 
your process. Yeah, these are great questions. Um, we, I was telling Chris this morning, it still feels like we are at the, in the early days of this. There are many, many things that we want to add to Guardian and new protections. And that's why I was talking about the um, partnership we have with HDR. Um, you know, we really look at it like that. Your feedback is just so important. And there's many, many things that we can do with this connected environment to kind of put your voice in front of the users at the right time. And one thing I made to add to that is, is there's a lot of data being collected behind the scenes with Guardian. And so what that's done here at ACR, it's given us an opportunity to see where, where we need to be more targeted on particular training. But then, you know, sharing that with, with, with Parley is, it also gives him insight on where he needs to be moving Guardian and how can Guardian help address a lot of these, um, a, a, a lot of these constant Revit um, limitations. And, and so uh, a good example of this is hide elements in tool or hide elements in view, like knowing, knowing that people do this all the time. And one of the, the biggest issues with hide elements in, in view is that is when you try to go find things, you can't figure out where to unhide it, right? Is it, has it been directly hidden in the view? Has, has it been turned off in the view template? So on and so forth. So um, yeah, so, so Parley is, you know, always trying to find solutions to a lot of those, a lot of those problems and limitations that we find within Guardian or excuse me, within Revit. Yeah, I'll bite on that, Chris. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, um, yeah, hide elements in view. But there's there's some commands in here that really are specific to the elements or the view that the user is in. And so I'll just tease a new feature coming up in our new release where we are providing much more information about um, the action, right? Uh, we're gonna be including element IDs, descriptions, view names, um, even some screenshots. Um, of the active views before and after so that you can really uh, drill into that data and find, okay, out of the 20 times someone hit elements in view, there's two in there that really shouldn't have happened. Um, so that's kind of part of our mission here. Okay. There's okay, another one question, if you can hear me. Uh, yeah. Hey, Adrian. Is my audio good now? Hey. Yes. yes. Hey, everyone. Yeah. So I just wanted to touch on content management solutions. So some of firms are moving towards solutions like Avail or Unify for content management. How does this interact with uh, that with that workflow? Uh, Parley, do you, do you mind if I if I take go. that one? Yeah. Go for um, it. And so let me see if I can go back a few slides here. Um, so the one thing I, I alluded to earlier is, get back to the appropriate slide here, is our 15,000 plus families and our 6,000 plus drafting views. So when we, when we dropped all that into our, our, our starter project and which became our, our container, we instantly exported all that out um, and upload it to our content management solution, which is Unify. And so basically what we had done though is, is since everything on Unify, you know, I can vouch for say it is from at least a standards perspective um, and the properties of, of those, those families and drafting views, everything was, was perfected. And, and so, and that everything that, you, that we tell our users we want you to go to Unify and download this from your project. Um, and what we have found is because people, especially with the use of Guardian are noticing that when, because we use Guardian to clean all this up, we created sort of muscle memory into the system. And so when you go to Unify or Avel or wherever you store your families, I mean, it, this could also be just on a network drive, is when you bring from those locations, right? 
guardian already knows those properties that are associated with those families, right? And so the input of those families and the use of guardian becomes very, very quick. The cleanup of your models become very much, become much quicker. People have noticed that if they pull something from their desktop or their secret drives or wherever they have those families, that they're still introducing you know, bad properties, non-compatible properties into your projects. And so they find that, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm spending a lot more time cleaning up, whether it's those families or, or their projects when they go to you know, the, non, the non-company approved resource. And in the case of ACR, that's, that's Unify. But ultimately, the um, you know, Guardian, it really doesn't matter um, to Guardian um, where that content is being stored. Guardian will still work in, in um, the same way and, and work in the same fashion um, regardless of how content is brought into your project. Yeah, we, we've, our customers are, um, we support all of them, basically. We have folks that use Hive, Avail, Unify, CTC, um, Vimlist, and all those other things. So um, it just, it's listening to all of it. Thank you, Edwin. We had one question. I, I typed it out here. Um, the question was if we support BIM 360 and the bringing in of templates and settings from other BIM 360 projects to current BIM 360 projects. Uh, we might need to dig into that one a little bit, Sean, in case you're looking for something different, but we do support projects in BIM 360 completely. Okay. Did you have another question, Edwin? No, yeah, I mean, um, I think uh, someone pointed out to me that uh, Veil, you had partnered, but it sounds like you've partnered with all of, or yeah, you're working with a lot of content management solutions, right? We've done some testing with those different solutions. Uh, we do have that partnership with the Veil as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but overall, I think when I looked at this solution two years ago, I think it was probably very early days, but uh, there there was a workflow where you also didn't have to load anything. You could just, if you had a project, you could basically clean it up. Is that still in there? It is, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the amount of cleaning we yeah. can do on an existing project is really incredible. Um, and just, I don't know if this is possible to put you on the spot, but if you were to just download a family from online to just bring it in and just see the list of everything that's happening, is, is that like a ledger that happens in, on the web? So do you mind if I answer that one, Parley? Sure. Is and I'm going to kind of answer that in an anecdotal kind of way, is with... Here at HDR, we actually tried to try to. We couldn't actually put in a policy that says no manufacturer's content, right? But we try to make it known. It, we preferred you not to do that. Um, but now with the with the use of Guardian, we actually don't mind it. Um, and and the reason being is is because when you download a piece of content from a manufacturer and you bring that in. Guardian will show you all those properties that brought in with that family and then allow you to map that to the properties in your project. So other than if the family is just built poorly, um, Guardian will address the rest to make sure it aligns with your standards, your Revit properties, your Revit, st your Revit standards, and ensuring the output of, you know, the, the graphical output of that family uh, meets the, the expectations of, you know, of, of your project in your firm. So yes, it, it will provide you the opportunity to, to see all the properties that come in, then allow you to map that to that into your project, thus kind of cleaning out of all the bad. Right. That so it, let's say if it, if it had like, let's say some materials named in a different language, like French, 
um, what you're saying is that would be sort of like a drop down that would show me that material and then propose what I could substitute with yeah. that's in my project. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So HDR, um, we're, we're a global firm um, that has, uh, we'll say a large presence, obviously in, in the United States, but also Canada, um, Germany, and Australia. And, and especially between the US and Canada, what we have done is we share a lot of content. Um, but what we've done is, is, is when we've converted our US content to to Canadian content, we've had to do it. Um, we have had to create it as Canadian metric, Canadian imperial, um, then also French as well. And so, as soon as we, um, as as soon as we say, all right, start making those mapping configurations, saying, you know, this particular property that is in English needs to be this property in French. Guardian remembers that. So it, it, it's, it, great. it is it is gr great a great great tool, especially when you have to main, maintain standards across the um, many different for types of standards and 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 units and and languages as well. Guardian also gives you insight, Edwin, to where the families are being loaded from. So uh, HDR's got a pretty good measure of you know. Are, are, is stuff being loaded from Unify where they've put a lot of investment or is stuff coming from outside? Um, so that's also important. Okay. Uh, there's another question here. Does Guardian, yep. uh, does Guardian use network licenses or named users? Can a firm start with a few seats to start up and add seats as they pass maintenance responsibility to project team slash end users. Harley, I'll let you take that one. Um, yeah, so our licensing is very simple, Nancy. It's it's um, basically based on the the um, the usage of Guardian. Okay, so it, you don't actually set up lists of users in Guardian. We we um, basically understand by the Revit IDs, the Revit usernames, when someone bumps against the system. So if, if you had um, 30 people that bump against Guardian during a given month, that would be kind of a target allocation for licenses for your company. Um, and it, it's just very simple to run that way. Um, that's why we do that. Um, there, there are some yeah, there's. We'd probably want to talk more about that, but it's it's not named user. It's it's really not network licenses either. It's based on the usage, and certainly you can you can start up with a few seats just to start things up, um, and build from there. And and partly I may add here is Guardian also has a a, a thirty day free trial that is full it is full functions for for all your users. Yeah, that's a good, that's a great point. We would love to, to get that trial rolling for anybody that's interested in learning more about this. Our trials really run differently than any other kind of tool out there. Uh, we really want you to see the full extent of what it can do for your firm. So there is no limit whatsoever. We often get firms that deploy widely to everybody during their trial even. And they just set everything to monitor. Um, so they don't, again, have to get user buy-in. They don't have to explain what these dialogues are about or anything like that. We're just learning about the opportunity. And it's, it's really uh, amazing when you start to see what that looks like. Um, and We'll just invite everybody on the call. I, I think we're just a couple minutes over. So we'll just invite everybody on the call that um, wants to learn more. We'd love to have a chat and, and really dig a bit deeper into this and show you some of what else Guardian can do. Are there any more questions? Sean, okay, thanks. We'll reach out to you. Edwin, anything to close up with from a, a user group standpoint? No, yes, uh, definitely 
thank you to all our attendees and thank you to all our presenters. Uh, uh, this is definitely a, a topic of interest, the quality assurance, quality control. And I'm glad we we're able to have this. Uh, we'll, we'll post the recording on our YouTube and let you all know when it's up. And uh, yeah, I appreciate your time. Uh, seeing familiar faces and some from uh, probably around the world, maybe. But uh, thank you and welcome. Hope we can continue this conversation. Thanks, Edwin, for having us. It's a pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye. Thanks. Bye.